Good morning, everybody. How are you? It's uh, actually August 1st. The year is flying by again. Um, it's Friday. Hope you guys are having uh, had a good week. We'll see if we can end the uh, week on a interesting note here. Um, I assume you guys have screen. No. Uh, Stanley will. I, I won't. I won't invite Stanley to speak here. He, he's done talking about trading. He, he. We talked. Somebody suggested I should uh, invite Stanley to come and speak here. Um, we had a talk uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he said. He asked what I thought about what he'd been saying in the media. I said, "Hey, go ahead. I. I think you're doing a fine job." And. Uh, he said, well, you know, you've you've got your education thing. So I'm just looking for something that I can that I can do to give back, which is take shots at the administration, you know, Democratic or Republic when they go the wrong direction. In, instead of pander to them like George Soros and some of the other people that have stolen money from the public. So no, he was not a shadow trader. That in the eighties he wasn't that big, Ouija. Um, I remember uh, 1985, we both walked in to be interviewed for a deal before Shearson went under, when it was actually Shearson Lehman. Anybody remember that? E.F. Hutton was still around. Um, they raised a hundred million dollars, and they were they were interviewing three people: Louis Bacon, me, and Stanley Druckenmiller. Sorry, and um, the only one of us that was interested was Louis Bacon. That's where he got his start. Um, the, we just didn't like the people to be honest and the people that we were talking to and that were that had raised the money actually ended up uh, being fired within the next six months and indicted uh, it was quite a, quite a scandal and Lewis ended up actually dumping the money and going to Commodities Corporation going uh, and well no I take that back Go, yes going to Commodities Corporation eh, kind of they raised some money for him. Let me put it that, that way. Um, he wasn't inside in the sense that he was a mentor or anything, but they raised some money from Mitsubishi Heavy, which was a the big investor. Uh, remember, If you remember in the mid-'80s, Japan was alive kicking and buying everything American, et cetera, et cetera. And in the background... They were trying to take over a lot of U.S. financial institutions, or at least an investor. We tried to email Ad Hour, it says, to get to a different site that does not let you in. I'll try. Uh, oh, okay, BJ, just, yeah, just go to me um, if you have problems. I, I will email him again. Um, he'll take care of you, don't worry about it. And, and if you're locked, are you still locked out? Okay. If you get locked out, email me immediately, and I'll. You know, I'm, I'm not as good on this site as I was on the old site, but I, I think I have the. Uh, I think I wrote down the instructions on how to get you back in. So. Okay, we we we'll figure we'll figure it out. It's no problem. Any any of you guys, you know, if you got if you got a. Um, uh, what's it called? Authorized.net. If they screw up your payment or whatever, just just. And you need help, just let me know. Good, great, great week of trade. That's good to hear, BJ. Um, I'm sitting on three monster positions uh, live. We're going to look at a live one today. Um, all, all chugging along. Um, just haven't decided enough's enough. I guess the market hasn't decided enough's enough. So that's fine with me. So let it keep running. So let's. Uh, 
Let's not waste any time. I, I do need somebody to remind me when it's, uh, I only have until 8, 8.40. So at 8.30, somebody give me a heads up, please. And I'll try and, I'll try and be faster. So we, actually, we won't even go through these. Let's just get out of here. So it's 20-Minute uh, Canada. Again, I know you guys, uh, some of you, are your head swims a little bit when we do tick. You don't do tick, uh, or your ticks are crappy, and uh, and or you just like a break from ticks, right? So this is vanilla as you can get. People that are just starting to trade here, or uh, certainly people that come into mentoring that have not been successful, one of the first things I say is, you know, you should be looking at Aussie and Canada. Slow down. Identify ranges. I identify when they break out of ranges. Try and anticipate what it means using the tools that we teach you, right? And that's exact. That's all we're going to do today. That's it. Sounds easy, right? And we're going to use. It, it's never easy. Oh, come on. We're going to use, remember on Monday we, we talked about this tool, um, and I'd never, you know, I'd never shown you guys this before, but, and uh, I'm not even sure Shane believes I'm right. I, don't, I described it to him, he, I'm going to do it today at midday, but I, he doesn't, I don't think he believes that I can draw a line that, that shows the uh, velocity of price even while it's in a range, which I showed you on Monday, remember? That's right. He'll come around. <clears throat> I did not. I've. I've not taught this to him. He has not seen it yet. So, um, see. Uh, this, and if you don't believe that I'm bringing new stuff out from, you know, digging down in the archives here, I'm looking at the tools I use and saying, okay, what, what do I draw that I'm not showing, or what, what do I see that I used to draw that I'm not drawing now, but that I should draw, and show you guys. Okay. So, let's take a look. This thing is in a range as Canada is wont to do. Canada does two things. It ranges, then it gets a little violent and runs. Ranges, violent, then runs, right? Then it finds its, well, it, sometimes it has help. Let me put it to you that way. It's called a dirty float because of our buddy at Royal Bank of Canada, New York, who were, basically intervenes for Claudette, the head of intervention at the Canadian fed and uh, so it gets to a level where it dirty float that means the currency is allowed to float but only as far as Claudette allows it to go okay if she doesn't want it to go down today you can take it up as far as you want but it ain't going down she just stand there and Gina even when I want to sell a lot if I start to sell and Claudette is there I get a call either from Richard at Royal Bank of New York, Royal Bank of Canada, New York, or from her saying, um, are you sure you want to sell Canada today? That's all they say. And to be honest, I don't ever fight them. So they are very interventionist. Um, well, they pick a side, um, and they have a, they have a target for the day. They have a, a range for the day. How about that? They can only hold these levels for short periods of time, right, because the market will go where it wants to go. Canada, they do a pretty good job managing Canada. We, we, I mean, you know, those, they know that they may have to get out of the way once, get out of the way twice, get out of the way three times. But they have a pretty, you know, they don't draw the line like concrete. See, that's where most feds make, most federal banks, central banks make the mistake, is they think that they can actually draw a line in the sand and nobody will ever go over it. Well, you know, screw that. Do they have endless money? Um, they used to have, but this market is, you know, more and more people are trading this market. So it's becoming more and more difficult to stand up to. And, you know, I remember when I first crashed, uh, crossed the billion dollars under management mark. I remember when I crossed the first 10 billion management under mark. And I remember it wasn't that long ago that I passed the first hundred billion dollars under management so guys like me are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and so 
It used to be that they would come in and do six or eight billion dollars and the market would go, never mind. But now six or eight billion dollars, you know, that ain't that much money anymore. I hate to say it. But it doesn't always pay to fight, right? If the, if the market tells you that's where it's going, that's fine. You can go ahead. But you might you might get a better price, first of all. But second of all, you need to decide whether the fight's worth it. So let's just take a look at it. You know, I, I wouldn't even worry about the central bank. I really wouldn't. The market, L's right. The market does go where it wants to go. <laughs> BG says, or it's probably Pat, right, not against a woman. Well, Claudette has been trading a long time. And... Uh, she plays very, uh, like she's very naive. She, she talks kind of slow and with almost a cloying French accent. Oh, how you do, Claudette? But, you know, she's very bright, very, uh, BJ always wins, says Pat. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Claudette generally gets what she wants. All right, so we're in a range. We've clearly marked out the highs. You can see we've got double tops, and we tried to get up there. It couldn't. Now we've come down, and we've maybe found a bottom. And we're back in the middle of the range. Everybody see that? Pretty simple stuff. So we watch it. And you can see it's just, and the range is, uh, it's only 30 pips wide. Right? So it's really not tradable. So if we want to trade this thing, what do we need? We need to get out of the range. Then we need extension, right? Or expansion. And then, of course, at that point, we're going to have to pick a side. So along the way, I gave you a tool on Monday that sometimes you can use along the way to show you whether price is, Keith is double the range, well, a little early to say double the range, Keith, we haven't, let's break out first. Yeah, we can always use double the range tool, but no, that's not the tool I'm talking about. I'm talking about, yeah, maximum excursion lines stacked upon another maximum excursion line with a different slope, right? And how those slopes relate to each other. Remember? Okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. Those are really new. Yeah. Yep. Monday was the first time I've ever showed them anywhere. Um, so obviously I'm going to show them a few times to myelinate this, right? So as I made this trade, I was looking at it saying, what maximum excursion lines would I normally draw here and how would I use them? If you think of one, once you learn to use them like this, when you think about them, they'll actually even tell you which median lines to use whether or not they should be traditional or modified, and which ones are likely to win. Okay, so here we go. We're in a range. Tickling with the top, but we're not breaking through. Oh, we've made a new high. So anybody that was uh, selling in the upper, you know, 10, 15% of this range, probably just got washed out of their shorts, right? And some people, of course, the breakout buyers got long either here or here. Make sense? So people are generally, I mean, there could be a short or two out there, but generally people are what? If they have a position, they're long. Okay. So let's, let's see how that works out for them. Ooh, not so good, huh? Next bar. Oi, what a bar. Uh, we need... Just to be consistent, it's probably there, but, probably, but maybe not. Closes with great separation, well off the high. Are the times on your chart, uh, no, they're not my time, they're Eastern Geo. 
Yeah, I sink to New York. Let's double check. Nope. I'm sure that's the case. <coughs> Excuse me. Eastern. Okay. Okay. So we make a new high. And then we wash out of it, right? And it's a hell of a wash. Of course, as we said, people were long, so they were vulnerable. We go from above the range to back almost within the lower 20% of the range. That's, that's pretty impressive. Now, when I see a wash that effective, because I could draw... I probably did, but let's draw this anyway. I bet I did draw this, but just to, yeah, you know what? We'll leave it just blue in case I drew it, right? Isn't this what we want to look at now? now? Is this going to help? And somebody says it's horizontal, and maybe this is the last photon. Maybe, okay. Let's. I'll put that up there, sure. Also, after that big move, would you mark the top with a question mark? Yes. And you'll, you'll see, I'm just going to mark it further to the right. We still don't have a high or a low. Yeah, we're, we're searching for a high. That is correct, actually. In fact, let, let's, let's write this. Let's, let's write this, he said, for the third time. We are searching for a high. Because we've taken out the prior high. Now, the low still stands... If this breaks, this line of maximum excursion, of course, we're going to be scratching our head and on alert, correct? All right, so let's see what we got. Testing it. Testing it, but it closes with nice separation. Testing it. We've got one, two, three, four lower closes then we come up and close with great separation so at that point I'm going to draw in this is the first maximum surgeon line I actually drew in so take a look at this one and take a look at this one and what do you see Are we stellar? Are we accelerating? <coughs> Closes are above the blue maximum screws on. Yes, you are correct. It's a great observation. But when we stack these maximum excursion lines, we are just decelerating. Right? We are still going sideways, but. Well, we could be we could be gentling, but if we were right on Monday, these lines tell us that price is not only slowing down as time progresses, but on Monday we saw that this sometimes just gives us the indication of how this range is going to play out, right? Also, this big wash might be another clue. Heck of a wash. Seems to be some serious sellers up here. All right, so by the slope of the blue line. Okay, so Al, the slope of this line is the first maximum excursion line. 
the brown one is the second one and note that the brown one has a lower or less steep line slope than this one so it's decelerating okay all right so again we're back in the range and we're holding so both maximum excursion lines are holding correct do you see it and now we're almost at the top of the range so maybe that was no big deal and maybe this whole decelerating thing is is crap okay if it's not what do we expect think tactically not a retest not new highs if these two lines are telling you that price is decelerating what are we what are we expecting well not new I don't want to go to new lows I don't want to even go to price to go lower a shoulder right perhaps horizontal perhaps lower we don't want to test the highs when we certainly don't want to make new highs. So tactically, we're expecting a shoulder at some point. See, yeah, we can, okay, we can say that. Hunt for the shoulder. The hunt for red shoulder, red October. See, names like this, little names like this will actually keep, help you myelinate. The hunt for red October. It'll help you myelinate. Um, this whole technique and what's going on. Okay, price is hunting for this shoulder, right? Nice, Gina. We hunt for C, we hunt for the shoulder. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mark this as a potential serious alternate pivot, alternating pivot, which, of course, we would say would be, if I'm correct, would be a top. We make a new high, I can throw that away. I am expecting a lower high. Ranging. All right. The other thing we want to know is what's the quality of the bottom? Okay. I, kn I know we have the bottom of the range here. I know we've got two maximum excursion lines that so far have held, but I want to know are we going to make higher lows? We did make a higher low here, so let's mark that. What is the quality of this low? Because we haven't tested it, right? So we're at the first maximum excursion line. And when this one busts, doesn't bust, you can see him try just like we tried here. Didn't break, right? So I put in a maximum excursion line. Take a look at this one. This one is faster, right? So it says maybe things are going to turn up. And this really is right this here this right at this area where you put in this new maximum excursion line is where we're actually asking the quality of the bottom because if this maximum excursion line holds which is faster than both of these then we're actually going to make, go make new highs does that make sense so out of the blue it, it it's a smaller line we're drawing it off of smaller pivots. If it can hold, we're all, and remember, we're we've drawn. I'm I'm pointing at the screen. Remember, we've we've made nothing but range trades except for this one bar here. Okay, can you please say it holds? If it holds a new high, is like it. Yep. Hang on, Gina. We're we're trading within the range, but we're using these lines 
to show us the velocity of price. And so far, our longest line is this blue line. The next maximum excursion line is this brown line, which has a lower slope, which means the velocity is lower. We're going to throw in this small one. And if it holds, that means it's going to eclipse these two lines. And the slope is higher. And we're likely to curl and take out the highs. But remember, it's a maximum excursion line drawn on smaller pivots. So yeah, it's a, it is a subtle behavioral shift. And we'll see if it can hold. Plus, that poke could be a sign of strength or, as well as weakness. It could be either one. Now we're going to find out. That's why, we're, that's why I'm saying, what is the quality of the bottom? This is a great example of trading in the moment. This was the point you were making with Jose Money. Yeah, you got to stay in the moment. Okay? I'm all juiced up, ready to get short. Then I draw this and say, okay, well, you know what? This, this line is really going to be the deciding factor for me. If it holds... I'm going to have to throw that idea away. I have observed that if price makes a mountain instead of having higher lows, then a probability of a shoulder is higher. Does that kind of relate to this? I have observed that if price makes a mountain instead of having higher lows, then the probability of a shoulder is higher. Uh, I don't know if that's a statistically true statement, but okay. Does it kind of relate to this? Um... It does in the sense that if you're if you're rooting for the turn up, you do not want this line and or this low to be taken out. Gina says this is a good example of why we must not get locked into an opinion. Yep. You have to be fluid. I don't I was leaning one way. Now I'm locked onto this area. Fluid like water, yeah. I'm locked into this area because I want to see how it plays out. So, let's watch. So far, this line looks like the line, doesn't it? It's got the frequency. It's holding. All the closes are there. In fact, the closes in general are even at the same frequency. It's all good. So, this maximum excursion line needs to hold if price is heading higher. Wrote myself a note there. Right? So, we accelerate a little bit. You know what I don't have? Guess I won't be able to do it. Dang it. Hang on, guys. This is driving me crazy. We don't have that there. And we don't have that there. All right, there we go. Back to work. Okay, so we've got a lower high, a higher low. Still low, I can start to make myself believe things, but we're still in a range. There you go, Matt. So you have to be careful because we are still in a range, so be fluid. But we can mark things out. David Jones told me this week that we all have strong opinions, but we also have strong stops. Oh, okay, I like that. I like that. I would modify it this way. We can all have strong opinions, but we but we must have strong stops, right? You can have an opinion, but you have to say, okay, that's how much I'm spending on this. And only this much. So at this point, I'm not ready to play because at this point I'm still what's the quality of this bottom and I I I'm stuck on this wash in one sense, but I'm also stuck on the frequency here as we move up. Follow me? 
So I got a fist fight going. And certainly at the moment, trying to create some logic. This this little line is this last line is doing pretty good. Uh, we're nowhere near this high, this high, or this high, but we are climbing with this frequency. Oops. This line just got blown. The blue one I put in, I'm, I'm not going to extend it. Everybody take a look. First maximum exposure line, toast, right? First sign we're in trouble. Now, this close, I'm going to give it that it's on the line, so I'm not going to throw this maximum excursion line away yet, but a little trouble, right? And we're testing not only this maximum excursion line, but this maximum excursion line. And remember, this third line is the three-dimensional representation of this prior low, right? So breaking this is making new three-dimensional lows, right? Might a max reflect help monitor 3D progress to the upside? Um, you can do that, but let me just... You, you can go ahead and do that, John, but let me just ask you a question. Right here, where you're going to put the, the reflection of the maximum excursion, you are eight ticks away from this high. If this high gets taken out, you know to monitor this high, so you really don't need this. I mean, you can put it in there if you want, but it's 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 the 2D representation is basically right here. Just pay attention to this high. You can draw it, but it's not a, it's not a use not really a useful line because you're really just drawing a channel that's only about five pips wide. See that? It's just going to dirty up your chart. You follow me? <clears throat> if you didn't have prior highs right in front of you, I would agree with you. But I would I would say it's not a necessary line because you've got prior highs eight ticks above you. Just go with the 2D marker instead. Okay. Because you, your chart's going to get dirty enough as it is. So, All right. So, uh-oh. Now this maximum excursion has been broken, and this maximum excursion. Two, two closes below, this one's gone as well. So my fast twitch, got to go up, small maximum excursion line, toast. With me? Now we're back to two things. Basically, one thing. Met this maximum excursion line, which is the 3D representation of this line, I'm willing to say this. This maximum excursion line needs to hold if price is just going to range. I think if the 3D line gets broken and we make new 3D lows, it's going to drag 2D into new lows as well. Fair enough? Matt, Matt says fair enough. Anybody else willing to go there? Or is that too far a jump? Okay. We're eating into both this lower maximum excursion line and the prior lows. Can you see it? Just haven't broken it, but we're, yeah, keep, they keep sticking their toe in the water, right? Trying to decide what is the quality of this bottom is this a good bottom or is this a bottom am i just going to dive in and take this one out okay the line is showing good support well the you could say that al i'll tell you what <coughs> are 2d and 3d in balance here no 3d is making new lows right So 3D is ahead of 2D, and we know they're going to get in balance one way or the other. Would you say it's precarious to the downside here, but you have not ascertained the quality of the bottom yet? I would say that, Ouija. Yes, that's exactly what I would say. It's at best a range, but the bottom is starting to look suspect. Where is the 3D reference line? 
Well, pick a line. Against this maximum excursion line, aren't we making new lows? Against this maximum excursion line, aren't we making new lows? Against this maximum excursion line, aren't we making new low? Any 3D line, we've picked your line. Doesn't matter. Right? In three dimensions, we're just making new lows, period. 2D, now back to where you were, Al. You said line is showing good support. Okay, this is where the, they get the name Dumble Lines from me, Al. There's all kinds of people now that have seen the five or six hits on this straight line saying, man, this, is, this line is solid. This line has been ta taxi tested tough. I'm going to get me some here and put my stop five pips underneath it. How many of you traded like that? I know I have. How many of you traded like that? I'm not asking you when. I'm asking if you remember trading like this. Oh, and it's not a guilty thing. It's a, you know, oh man, look at this line. This line's going to hold, baby. Right? It's weird, though, making new 3D lows, but there's still upside frequency. Yeah. The, the, you know what? The, the issue's not decided right. Not, not yet. Right? Don't speed. Price has not made the decision yet. Let it make the decision for you. Are you ready to trade? Is that, anybody ready to get long or short here? Would it make sense to draw a down maximum excursion line from the red shoulder if we make th new D3? Uh, again, you'll, until we break the lows, you're going to be muddying the water. You can draw it, Shane, but I don't really, th you're just going to have a messier chart, but you can draw it, sure. If it helps you understand where we're going, go ahead and draw it. Um, it's weird making new 3D lows, but there's still upside frequency. So we're still in in flux, right? This is this is not the null area. This is the null point. Or, I'm sorry, the null, this is the null area, not the null point. The decision has been made, but it is going to be made. Now, all the people that live off of horizontal lines, they got their money on the horizontal line, right? They got their horse right there. It's a pretty line. They've seen price make new highs, and it looks like it cannot break. Look at these. Look at this close. It cannot break this horizontal line. But we're looking at the 3D making new lows. Busting every line, right? So the question is, will 3D drag 2D or 2D drag 3D? But I'm not ready to trade. Whichever one wins out will probably then set up the way I lean. Does that make sense? If 2D is strong enough here to drag 3D back up and make new 3D highs, I'll probably look for, I mean, we still, and, and by the way, we still haven't had any range extension, have we? So can I trade really yet? No, nah, not really. So I can enjoy the signs, just relax. And let the market tell us where it's going. Still holding, still holding, still holding, still holding, still holding, oop, or not. So, this maximum excursion line, which is the 3D representation of this prior low, is busted. And this prior low is busted. That makes me think that that is. The mystical MLA, right? Now we need range extension. We've gotten a little bit. We got just a tiny bit up here, but we got a little bit, right? We need more room. Now I said two minutes ago, and maybe I said it fast and you didn't catch it. If 2D is able to turn 3D up, I'll go that way. If 3D forces 2D to break the lows to catch up I'll go I'll be leaning that way does that make sense 
All right, so I am leaning to the short side now. And take a look and see what I wrote over here. Oh, hmm, maybe the top's in now. Okay. Um, you can again. You can. People are dying to draw a downside max exclusion. You can. You can draw it. Um, I, I. I. I don't know. You've got. I would just use the 2D markers myself. But you can draw it. There's nothing wrong with drawing it. I just don't. I just don't know that it makes any sense. In the sense that you've got 2D markers. After, one after the other stacked up here. Well, you know, what I really like about these is they're inside and I don't have any markers. Here, I've got each one of these highs as a marker, so I'm really not in a hurry. Let's use this one to put in a slope line. But, I, but I'll put it in for you. Matt, Shane, I'll put it in for you, okay? Seems to have frequency. Okay. It's fine. I just, you know, I... Okay. It's fine. All right. So, 2D has been broken. It's been crippled. Right? And now we've got some range extension. Now we're looking at uh, 60 pips, 50 pips. It's better. We come down, leave a low, but we close with nice separation. And all these bars actually look like that. Actually, all these bars look like this. It's kind of weird. Look at it. All these bars, almost all these bars, are closing in their upper third. And yet, in 3D, they're going lower, and finally in 2D they give it up. But even as they give it up, they're closing with these great separation. You know these these long tails, right? It's weird. Well, I don't know if that's the market fighting it. Everyone picking at the bottom. Yeah, that chance. What I was thinking too. Beep beep bars. Well, the whole thing is beep beeping. Yeah, buying tails. I I think it's everybody's picking at the bottoms, trying to buy bottoms, but. Why you would do it, especially after this low game, I, I I don't know, but I don't know. We'll see. All right, we start to flatten out, and you can see. Look at all the closes are in the upper third, right? Look at that. It's weird. Okay, here we are against your maximum excursion line. How about that? Well, you know, maybe it was a useful line because it turned it. on a dime right so we make a new low and once again look at the separation on that And when we get follow through, okay, separation on the close. When we get follow through, I mark this as an alternate pivot. The maximum extrusion helped draw B earlier. Okay. But now we're breaking above your maximum extrusion. So let's. See if we can neuter this, so to speak. One. There we go. Like that. Okay. Okay. So now we're. Could you extend your upsloping brow maximum screws line from the higher low label? Sure. I'm not. Uh. Well. Is that what you want to know? Oh, the other one. Okay. Where do you want it to go? There? Okay. Heading higher. 
Yes, they may turn into center lines. Sure. Absolutely. Heading higher. All right, so actually, let me get back to right here. Price is cascading lower from a washed high. Do you see that? This is me tactically thinking. Price is cascading lower from this washed high, this big washed high. It's the biggest bar on the on the board by far. Here's my tactics. I expect that there's going to be a lower high here somewhere and a pull, pendle and pullback shoulder. Does that make sense? I don't know if it's a trading opportunity. Um, well, Gina says for looking for a failure at a brown line. I actually didn't extend this, so I actually wasn't playing with the brown line, but it's a reasonable guess. So you're looking for a bottom and then a pullback from that bottom. No, we found a bottom. Now I expect a pullback, and I expect it to be a lower high. Would you expect the shoulder to be around the area of the three stacked highs? Um, I don't really have expectations of where it's going to be. This is a reasonable guess with the maximum excursion line. So I didn't draw it, but if I had, it, that's the most likely area, right? I think. So let's see what we get. Now we wait for price to show us. Very good, Gina. So everybody sees what I'm looking for tactical. All right, so we're at that maximum excursion line, playing with it. Kind of through it, but the next bar is right back down. So I mark this as alternating pivots. So this becomes MLB and we got a new flavor, MLA, right? Now, why am I? Why do I want MLA? Timing is a possibility. Another possibility is um, well, I always like lines of opposing force, right? And yeah, Petra's got it. I expect that this is a shoulder, but I'm not sure that I know what the direction is yet. Okay, I'm leaning vaguely short. But if we get a higher low, I could be convinced. Follow me? Which is what changes in case we get a higher low. I could be convinced. You could convince me yeah, that's fine. We got a lower high, but maybe now we're going to flower to the upside. You could, you could, I, you could make the case. Still, I haven't had range extensions, so still 50-50 for up and down. I like that, Shane. So, even though my tactics said, you know, we're cascading lower and we should have a lower high, I'm not sure. You know, pr price could definitely change my mind. I don't. As I see this line form, I don't see an opportunity yet. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to get short here. It doesn't look like a quality opportunity to me yet. We're right back in the range again. And the range ain't that big. So I want to see more. Okay? I might miss a trade, but I want to see more. Would you say that this line of force up doesn't look like a pendulum pullback at this point. Uh, no, I think this is a pendulum pullback. I think this is exactly what it looks like. And it's right to this. I like that, you know, I didn't use this, but Ouija, Ouija pointed out, I think that's a great use of this maximum excursion line. Here's our pendulum pullback. Now the question is, is this the pullback that gives us new lows? Or is, the pull, is this the pullback that gives us an opportunity to get long? And I don't know that answer yet. Does that make any sense? The, to me, the answer is to the right. In fact, let me just...
this is why I don't want you guys so focused on these highs and lows over there to the left because even though you know we've intuited that this pendulum pullback and shoulder is about to happen the answer is what happens over here do we make new highs? Do we, do we take out this high? Does this bottom hold? We need some logic to work here to make us take a position from the long or short side now. Okay? One thing has worked so far, the lower high. And that's all. And I'm, we can put in the median line, I guess. Let me see if I can get it. Yeah. Uh, hang on a second. No. Nope. I've got overlapping BC lines that makes it difficult to grab it. So hang on a second. Ah. Come on. See if that helps. Well, the hell with you. I know where the C is. Pardon me. Oh, even that's not going to work for me, really? All right. When in doubt. the that's what I need right there da, 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 da. bingo and take a look this red maximum excursion line it's pretty much the center line So just to, so the chart's not muddy, I'm going to take it off for now, okay? Or I'll do this. I'll just I'll I'll move it back so it's out of the picture. How about that? Okay. Fear of missing the move might force my hand early here. Yeah, but here's the here's the problem, John. What move? See, as we're here, what move? You you want to get short now? Uh, the goal to go is 20 pips. 15 pips, 20 pips, probably 15 pips. So, you know, you can definitely get short here. But I'm not sure that I've seen... If you want... Uh, you could go all the way to here. Hell, you could sell the clothes of that bar if you want. You can go anywhere in there. Fear of missing the move. I know that feeling. Forget about fear. Okay? Forget about it. Forget about fear. Forget about greed. Just trade. I know it's easy to say and hard to do, but you are going to have to conquer both of those if you want to be consistently profitable. Okay, so if you wanted to get short, it's here. I'm not sure that I have enough information, but maybe I'm a wimp. I don't know. So you could have gotten short there or there. And let's see what we get. We've now got to double your, you know, we're one to one now. We come down to close to the median line, leave a low. Outside the median line, whoops. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, if you were short, John, it doesn't mean anything's changed. The first thing it means for me is, if, we ch if we're outside the median line, the very first thing I would do is, course 
Try a modified shift. Try a little tenderness, right? And we never really made, now we've made the median line. But with the traditional one, we didn't even make the median line, right? So we gentle this and let it make the median line. And now we've made the median line. Now we're testing the upper parallel, right? So now we want to find out. Remember, because we just switched it now, it's curve fit, right? So I generally do this to just remind myself, okay, that's where I curve fit this this bad boy right here. That's when I decided it, or I, or I put a note to myself, change it to a modified shift. That's where I changed it, okay? So, so far so good. Turns off, but look at all the closes. This damn thing, look at all the closes. Like, these closes are driving me nuts. Why is that curve fit? Because that's when we decided to change this from a traditional to a modified shift because it pleases our eye. It, it had broken out. Do you give less credence to curve fit drawing? Of course. But the moment it's been tested, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. And this has now been tested, so I'm fine with it. Follow me? I still think there's a... So the decision to change the line if it's curve fit. Yeah. All right, so now I still think there's a problem here because it, it's not moving away from the upper parallel, so it needs to move away from the upper parallel, right? You've seen that like in the uh, movies with robots. Move away from the vehicle, please, sir, right? And the guy's got the stun gun. It needs to move away. And it's not. Uh-oh. First close outside. Second close outside. Now, not by much, and we haven't taken out even the high, high, or even C, but we're starting to eat to the upside. Okay, back inside. Oh, all, all better. But still hanging in that area. They're trying. Tested this high. It held. So if we take out this low, John, I think you, uh, you could go to break even. Hey, you can go to break even. Worst that happens to you is it was break even, right? With me, John? Okay. Why would you go to break even? Well, we just boxed it in. See it? And now we just broke through. Now we we could put a 15 pip up here, but it's going to be better to be at break even than at the 15 trail of 15, right? And plus, if we get up here, you don't want to be short anymore. So, it at least gave you a lotto, John. So, how about that? You take that? How many we take a lotto ticket? Yeah, free trade, right? I'll take a lotto ticket any day of the week. Okay. We come down and make a low, nice big fat bar, and once again, look at the separation on this close. And when we get follow through to the upside, I mark this as an alternating pivot. Yeah, beep, beep, don't you think? They've, they've been driving me crazy the whole time, and I can't, can't figure it out. But now we're starting to get something interesting here. Now I've got a maximum extrusion line. Here's the 2D dimension of this low, the A pivot. And here's the th three-dimensional representation of it, right? Can you see that? And if this is A and this is C, this is the maximum extrusion line, a 3D representation. What else? This is something else. What is it? It's the lower parallel of the modified shift. It's begging. If, if we're about to draw a median line, it's begging for a modified shift, isn't it? Give it to me. Come on, baby. Give it to me. It's telling you. I said this right at the beginning. Sometimes these 
maximum excursion lines will actually tell you which median line to draw and whether or not it's a traditional or modified shift, right? It's begging for it. Please just do the modified shift. So, okay. This is a leap for you? Okay, good, Gina. So, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm ready to mark C at that, point, at that but let's be less aggressive. Okay, when we take out the, all those highs, now we'll make it C. And now we'll mark, and let's just, I'm going to leave it. Um, let's, let's leave it traditional and, and C. But I think it's calling for a modified shift right away. But let's leave it traditional for a minute. So, heading along. We vaguely got below the median, the pink median line, but just vaguely, and now we're at the upper parallel, right? So, magenta to magenta, or whatever this color is. Tops holding, or not. Trading back and on. All right. I think this pink modified shift. Be broken. What do you think? Um, no. This one. Yes. So let's let's uh, let's neuter it a little bit. Let's leave it right there. Okay. Just so we can. Our drawing is a little crisper, okay? So we can see. Lots of activity outside of it. I know you can go to a warning line, but. All right, so make a high and stop. No follow through to the upside, draw out our advanced multi-pivot line. All right, um, we can't read it. Oh, that's because it's not meant to be read yet. This popped up, but it's not meant to be read yet. You need to know more. At what point would you decide to use the modified shift? Would that not give you an idea of center? One second, Jose. You're going to find out. So we've got a top and a lower top marked, and we've got something here. See it? Triple bottoms. All right. Ranging after failing to test the upper parallel doesn't help me. We haven't inter interacted with this median line at all, have we? And that's a fair amount of data. You all following me? Yeah, I don't care about the similar frequency. See, I can draw a median line that's, uh, you know, a 40 times wider than this. And it might have frequency, but is it going to help me? It is the path of price only, but it's not going to help me trade, right? I need something that plays, that touches, and intersects with price. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to trade. There's no information, right? See, the information comes from the... This is a physics, I don't, I'm not going to drag you too far into physics, but this is a little bit like a atom smasher, okay? We're going to get our information from the collision of price with frequency. Follow me? No collision, we don't know anything. All we have is lines. But, If the lines intersect, if the lines are tested, if the lines interact, then they give us information. Even if they're broken, they give us information. All right? So we need them to inter interact with price. So, Jose, your answer is when it starts to range and we haven't even made the, the median line, it tells me, yeah, this is nice, that's fine, it's showing me the probable path of price, but what I want to know is the probable trade. Right? So, at this point, I'm willing to say, I need something different. And I don't see anything else to draw, so 
let me try the modified shift. And when I try the modified shift, how's it look now, Jose? Okay, it looks very nice. Okay, and that's what the maximum extrusion line was calling for all of, okay? More information, maybe you force pivot. And it, yeah, now you could, again, if you matches the extrusion line perfectly, well, that's just the, the nature of the, of, of the geometry, but you could have gone with the maximum excursion line and just drawn the, the uh, modified shift right away if you want, okay? And, and and between you and I, I just looked at the max script line and said, I think this is probably going to be a modified shift. And just put in the modified shift, and it worked perfect, perfectly for me right away. So, But I want you guys to see, if you draw the traditional, when it's time to flop over, right? Don't give up on it. Sometimes it just means you need to go to the modified shift, okay? So we flip it, and immediately we go, wow, hey, you know, that that's pretty good looking. And price has intersected with it nicely. Let's see what we get. We're ranging, right? See it? And I put this down here because it's a multi-pivot line moving forward. We don't know what it's you know how it's going to be. In fact, I'm going to do this. We don't know how it's going to become important, but generally, these advanced multi-pivot lines do become important. And this one, we've been below it, we've been above it. Cries out to be a. Anybody tell me what this probably is? Balance line, yeah, very good. Okay. The range continues. The range continues. The range, that's a lot of range. Remember I told you Canada goes from moving to range to moving, right? That's just the nature of Canada. Get used to it. And once you get that feel for it, it actually doesn't bother you. A lot of people, when the first time you look at Canada, they'll go, well, I don't want, who the hell wants to trade this? When you get used to it, it goes from balance to extreme, to balance to extreme, to balance to extreme, back, back and forth and back and forth. And it's not that hard to read. Slow and boring, says BJ. <laughs> It's not for everybody. Do you guys even trade it, BJ? Oh, okay. Slow and boring, and they trade it all the time and successfully trade it. Right? You just have to, yeah, it's rock time on an interday trade. Yep. If you can get with the rhythm of it, it makes some for some great trades. Let's see if we can get to my trade here. Now we got, uh, well, we got we got a good 25 minutes. We're fine. All right, so we make a low, but look at our close again. When you, when it moves, you can hold it for a long time. Yep. All right, so look at our close. We poke below this balance line, but we close up here. Back in the range. All right. I say this. I got the median line right in front of me. Okay. See that? We've tested the median line. We've tested the upper parallel. Everybody get that? This is 2D, 3D balance right here. You're exactly right. Very good. Everything's in balance. All closes are well within the range. Closes with great separation. If we get back down to the median line, I'm willing to get long. 15 pips stop. If I'm wrong, it's just 15 pips. Why not be below here? I don't think this is worth a 25 pip stop. 
the range is so small, I don't think it's worth throwing that dough on the table. And this is the balance line. We haven't closed below it. I think in a weird way, I, I know this is going to seem strange because the line is actually above where I'm getting long, but I think this is structure. Do you follow me? Okay. Repeat the logic again. We're well within this green median line. Okay. We're in a range and we're sliding to the median line. You see that? We're above Petra. Do you see that? I'm going to hold your hand. Come on. Okay. We're above it. We're above this balance line. And every close has been above this balance line. We poked down here twice. This is a double bottom. See it? But the closes are well, are right back in here. So in a weird way, this is the structure right here, the bottom of the this balance line. Plus, of course, if price is going to run out of energy to the downside, it should right at the median line, right, Petra? Yes? No? Okay, so we've been to the upper parallel, so I don't have to worry about Hagopian, right? One, sec one second, Keith. Got that, Petra? So I'm willing to buy. We've tested it once. We've tested it twice. I'm, if it comes down again, I'm willing to buy the third test of this median line, and I'm going to put a 15 pip stop on it. Is that okay, Petra? Okay. Now, back to Keith. Keith says, was the first probe down to the median line your trigger to enter the order? Nope, not here. I'm At this point, I'm wondering here, but when it comes down this time, leaves double bottoms and closes back up here, uh, I, for whatever reason, you could have done it, Keith, you could have done it here. But for whatever reason, it didn't happen for me until this line printed. And then I went, you know what? It's back within the range. It keeps trying to get out of the range. This is the balance line, and it's right at the, it's like the balance line is coming right to the median line, horizontal into slope. This is just exactly what I love to trade, right? And if I'm wrong, it's 15 pips. No big deal. Does that make sense? Okay, so I put my order in. Filled. Closes within the range as well. Is this considered a cash stop to you? No, I told you. I thought, in a weird way, even though I'm trading underneath it, I think this gray line, let me make it fatter. And I know this is going to sound strange to you. I think this is structure. And I'm getting undervalued entries. How about the, you know, it's like marked down to the cash all. So here we are taking a trade at 2D and 3D balance, not extreme. You are correct, Gina. We're taking it at the median line. You know, there's a lot of people that tell me that they can't trade at the median line, they always lose. There's some other people that tell me they can't trade at the upper parallel or my, uh, lower parallel because it they always lose, right? But you can trade up all of them. That wide range bar at 11 o'clock was an important piece of the structure, right? 11 o'clock. Right here, Ouija? Yeah, I mean, it propelled us out. Here, we're starting to curl, and we wonder if it's just going to stop right in this area, and it propels us right out of that structure, takes out highs. Absolutely. Yep. So he's talking about this bar right here. And it's set up. That's when I drew in, when this bar happened, I was looking for kind of the hinge or the lever. And it seems to me the balance line of the, the hinge and the lever were right here. And it's also the first pullback. You could mark it down here. You know, if you, if you want to, here, if it makes you feel better to be underneath the swing, how about this? This is the first pullback right here. Okay? So if you want to be underneath the swing, if that, if that makes you feel better, there's your first pullback 
and then we go on to new highs. So we're underneath this, but I'm going to tell you the way I'm thinking about it is the people that are selling here don't understand that they're selling underneath the balance line, and every close has been within the range and above the balance line. And so in a weird way, I'm buying just underneath structure. It's like I'm getting bargains here, right? Like bulk discounts. And I'm, buy I'm just buying at the median line. There's nothing weird about that, is there? So are we good with this? I know it's kind of a it's kind of a ooky stop. I get that. I'm not, like as I said, I'm not going to spend the extra 10 pips to be underneath here. It doesn't make any sense for me. Okay? And again, if you if you want to feel like you need structure, this is this is the This is actually the if you look at it carefully. This is the first pullback. Right there. Can you see it come up, stop, and curl down? And then we go on with this bar to make new highs and another net new high. So it was Price's job to make a new low, but if it didn't, and now it's going the other way. That is correct, John. Price needed to keep right on going, and it doesn't even. Well, Weechi, I'm going to turn this on your head. I would be interested to know your target. I want to know where you're, th this is going to be my question to you guys. Where, where would, if you, if you took this trade, where would your target be? Awful early for a phone call. So I say reject. Any, any ideas? Refresh the median line, see what I get. Um, you could. Good. Double the range, warning line, all good ideas. This would be the width median line, isn't it? Okay, so we've got a new maximum excursion line. Somebody, somebody's paying attention. Yep, absolutely. Let me see if I can grab it. Dang it. Uh, come on. That's not it. Uh, well, fine. I'm just going to move you out of the way. All right, so now I can grab it. There's our new maximum excursion line. Now I can move the median line back to where it's supposed to be. I just can't draw it. There we go. All right. So... Somebody said, oh, I should have done this before I moved it. Maybe I can do it. Reflect maximum excursion to the high. I don't think that worked. So we'll move this rascal again. And go to this high and try it again. All right, there we go. Okay. And hopefully I don't need to move this one again. All right, close enough for jazz. All right, what happens, Tim, if price goes to the right, breaking the median line? Do you continually go wide again? I, I don't really care. I've, I thought I've made this clear, Jose. It doesn't matter to me if it breaks the median line. I don't really care. I'm going to use the median line. I mean, the median line, this blue median line, um, and even even the green median line. They're just they're just frequency, and you know, frequency the frequency does hand off. So it's okay with me. Somebody wants to double the range, so let's do that. Do you understand what I mean, Jose? So 
So doubling the range would look like um, better than that. Would look like like that. All right. Okay. So second warning line, I agree. We can certainly do that. Yep. Or you can as got what I'm thinking, which is if I can get some excursion past my entry, just box in profit because Canada, you can, you're the one that said it. Canada tends to run and run and run once you once it actually gets out in free range, right? That's one of the nice things about Canada. It tends to just range and then go and go and go and go. And if you can get in and then it starts to break new highs, it runs and runs and runs and runs and you can just box it in. So then this will work especially for you, Pat and BJ. Rather, if you got a new colt, rather than put the fence around it, let the damn thing run, right? Let it have its head. Is that, isn't that what you say? All right, so here we go. We are at new highs. We are through the upper parallel. We're at a little bit more than one to one. Here's our reflected maximum excursion. Stops there the first time. Now, if you want to take profit there, let's take a look at this. Whoever suggested that, you are out. Uh, and you made two to one. So I don't. that does not work for me. Okay? No, don't work. So we're going to take that out. Yep, we got about 10 more minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Everybody in 10 minutes, don't let me forget. Can't let my son down here. All right, so now we're running into more new highs. We're through, if you like the blue median line, we're through the median line and we're playing with it, right? Um... See if I can grab this real quick. Oh man, I'm a lucky man. Let's see, that would be the 50. Yeah. And the 100 and the 150. Okay, so now we put some warning lines out there for those of you that wanted the warning lines. Okay. We, we just about got everything covered. So we're getting some excursion. And we're at the median line, the blue median line, and we're sliding to the right over to the lower parallel. We see that all the time, right? These slides. And we're ranging right now. What's the, what are the odds? 50-50, right. Except, boom. Now, I don't even have to measure this to know that I'm now at at least 3 to 1, right? I can see it. Can you see it? We've taken out the first green warning line. We've taken out the blue median line. We've taken out the prior high. I'm going to break even. If you want to be more aggressive with your stop, you are more than welcome to go from break even instead of going to break even to go to a slight profit and we're talking like five pips but get it bars change not many down pokes anymore yep more acceleration now we're at the uh, are we at Meeting line, upper parallel, third warning line. Yeah, I'm almost done with sale because I only got 10 minutes, but okay. I'm at the third warning line. Still not willing to take profit. 
Okay? Just going to box it in. Taking out the third warning line. Okay, now we leave some highs. See the highs? And we'll see the quality of these highs, whether it turns price. Now, this is so narrow. What is this? Can somebody tell me? No, well, there's a reason for it. What causes it? It is classic Canada, but what causes it? Time after expansion. Look. We went vertical. Then you gotta you gotta pay for vertical. Right? It costs that to go vertical. Make sense? 2D and 3D coming back together. Okay? Okay. At some point they're gonna be back in balance. And then price will do its thing. But we're just coiling, coiling, coiling. All right, so now I put in a downsloping maximum excursion line in case this is over. What's the top look like? So take a look. What's the qua? I mean, I've got money in this. I've got three to one or more, right? I'm right back to the same question. What's the quality of the bottom? I'm looking for a bottom. I haven't made a bottom yet. I'm looking for a bottom, right? What's the quality of the top? Have I made a top? I'm looking for a top. Right now, I have just a skinny range. I'm unwilling to call that, you know, it does. that's not range extension and overextended. If anything, we're at balance at this point. Does that make sense? Compression, sure. So we're inspecting the bottom and the top. And now we draw in, I drew in, just in case, here's the downside maximum excursion line. Don't know if I'll need it, but now we're retesting the upper one. Trying to go, and you can see we're back inside the blue, by the way. And, all right, now we've got... We start to turn off. Now take a look. Here's our first maximum excursion line. Here's our second maximum excursion line. What can you tell me about them? Yes, we're making new 3D highs. No, price is not, it's not price is not decelerate. It's going from steeper down to less steep. So it will, it's decelerating, meaning less negative. Okay, John? So let's say we're going from negative 10 to negative 2. So if 3D is making new highs and we're starting to get higher velocity here, in a weird way, it is accelerating to the upside, even though they're downsloping lines. That's right, Matt. That's exactly right. They are downsloping lines, but the newer line is hot. It has a higher slope than the older line, so it is accelerating to the upside in three dimensions, right? Now, remember, on Monday, we talked about when price is in a range, you can use this. And you'll know in advance when price is going to break out to the upside long before anybody else has a clue. Because this it just it looks stuck in a range well below the highs. Maybe a re-entry point for those who got out earlier. Maybe. Maybe down at the median line? I don't know. Still in the range. Can you see it? So most people are they're lulled to sleep because we're in the range. But you've got something interesting going on. New 3D highs and higher acceleration of our three-dimensional lines. We left a higher low, okay. Now we've got double bottoms. Well, took those out. 
Now, another piece of the puzzle. Here's our original bottom. We're, we're checking the quality of the bottom. Here's the original bottom maximum excursion line. And look at the new one, four minutes. Yep, take a look. See how it's higher? It's accelerating as well. The top is accelerating, the bottom is accelerating, right? You see that? So let's see if that plays out. Testing this bottom a lot. Testing this bottom a lot. All right. Let's mark the upside maximum excursion line. See what we get from that. Nice touches on it. And new 3D highs. Making you in your mind. I don't see, I don't mind sitting on a position that's churning as long as it's giving me these signals. It's telling me just be patient. You're, you'll be fine. 3D is working, 2D will eventually work. I don't mind. New highs. New highs. New highs. Now, when you take out this box right here, of course, you can box in profits. See it? New highs. New highs. Boxing. See if we get the current before I have to go. Another maximum excursion line. And note that it's a faster slope. Things are accelerating even further. See it? So it tells me stay with it. We're accelerating. Stay with it. Don't worry. It's not, it's not running out of energy. It's accelerating. Look at it go. New highs. If you just listen, that new tool is really nice. Well, you, you can overuse it, but, you know, in the right situation, and this is the right situation, and there are no pullbacks. That's right. You can use it and use it and use it and use it. And I may have overused, overused it today, but I'm trying to make the point for you when you go back and watch the replays that on both sides... This was doing nothing but telling you which way it was which, right? Back at the prior high. Here's our box. Can you see the box right in front of you? All we need is a breakout. Breakout. Didn't get stopped out. There we are. We're not current yet, but... All right, so let's squeeze in. And I'll let you guys figure out where you want to be. So there's our entry. I guess we could go maybe one less. There's our entry. The worst that happens to us at the moment is uh, we, make, we risk 15 and make 138. You willing to do that? That's the worst that happens to us. Yeah, still in. Sure. Stops right here. Okay? So, getting short too early may well have cost me the real opportunity. That is true, John. The lotto, free lotto ticket sometimes comes with a price. It's hard to turn around, isn't it? So, I know this is an abrupt ending, but my son needs to go. It's cre Yeah. So... I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a great Friday. I'll see you at midday. I'm doing midday today. If not, have a great weekend. I'm sorry that I got to run, but I, I'm, I'm the taxi this morning. You all take care. Have a great uh, weekend. If I don't see you at midday, I'm going to do the mar market map session today. Everybody take care, and thanks for letting me get out early. Happy Friday.